Hey ladies and gentlemen, how are you? I'm glad to be bringing you another video. This documentary be on the Flat Earth and its Firmament. Uh, there's a little speculation as to whether or not the Earth still has its firmament, whether or not the firmament ever existed, and or many situations. I'm, I know this is called Flat Earth and its Firmament, and it's showing the round Earth version, but this is one of the better images on the internet that I can find. I had an amazing photo that showed the flat earth going from space and whether or not that was CGI or not it was an amazing photo but it has been taken down and I have no longer have access to it and it showed basically this image here except for the flat earth and it showed the uh, firmament over it and it was basically a GIF file and I no longer have access to it because it's no longer on the internet. Um, so that is an unfortunate situation. I want to show you this because I really believe that Earth does at least partly have a firmament. Now, there's a lot of speculation as to whether or not the firmament is around Earth, whether it's around the stars and the planets separating um, our universe, or what we know as a universe, from the outside existence among various other things and I want to get into this because there's a lot to actually go over I have nearly I think somewhere around 25 sources and I don't know if I really want to get into all of them because some of them I've already sourced um, the rocket being shot up then three minutes later it hits the firmament um, I've shown that and I believe the first documentary I put up so I really don't want to show bits and pieces of things that I've already gone into um, but it's for you to see and everything else um, when the rocket did hit it oddly enough didn't explode or anything which I still find very funny that it could be going into the air at such a speed hit this object or shield or whatever it was and not break apart and not have the nose cone go into the engine compartment and combust so I'm actually quite astonished whether or not this is actually true I do have something from a physics source which would basically prove that Earth does have some kind of a firmament and it's kind of stupid not to believe that there isn't something and I've always believed in the Bible and the Torah and various sources that kind of do spell out how everything kind of does exist and it's kind of funny how not everything we know really exists the way we think it does and the more and more we take God out of schools and everything, the more and more of a reality the state can have against us, etc., etc., etc. I was watching something the other day, and it was talking about how China was basically setting up their uh, moon landing in a stage, in a sound stage area in Shanghai or somewhere like that. That they were that they were actually in some testing area. Basically faking a moon landing. Oh no, they were training. Yeah, that's why they hired cameramen and everything else. Okay, fine. So if you see anything coming out with China landing anything on the moon anytime soon or in the next year or two, you'll know it probably came from there. So I disagree the fact that I still believe we went to the moon. I still believe we can reach the planets. I do believe we can get through this firmament. I do believe there are holes in the firmament where we can escape and leave. Because like anything else, I believe that it isn't, you know, made of, you know, some super material that cannot be penetrated. And as such, you know, if you navigate the holes, it's a clear shot out, this and that and everything else. That's what I believe, at least. I don't know so much about one thing versus another, but... Let me get into the information so that I can help you guys out in terms of what is mostly true and what is not. As always, folks, you decide. 
All right, this is the first video I showed you, I believe, in the first uh, documentary I had about the rocket reaching altitude of 73 miles above the Earth, and it hits something very solid. The rocket hits it, and basically it just spins and spins and spins, and that's it. Uh, it's come from GeoShifter on YouTube. I'll cite him like I cited him last time. So 73 miles in the air. I can show as much as this, as I want for educational purposes. I'm only going to show less than a minute or minute, minute and a half or so. I'm just trying to get to a point where I can show this where it actually is. Here we go. Hitting the dome in And notice it hit something, folks, and it just stayed there. The rockets didn't stop. It actually hit something. And this is the part I'm going to show you um, that I didn't show you before. Let's watch it from two cameras, spinning out of control, spinning through the air. 73 miles up there, folks. And that's what it looks like from both space and everywhere else. So that's amazing. My next thing I want to talk to you about is very amazing. It's a photo I have here and it basically says how is it possible for a non-vacuum of Earth atmosphere to meet with a vacuum of space? Well it's easy if you remember the fact that they're lying to us. It's very simple folks. They're lying to us. And I know exactly why they're lying, because they want to keep in power. They want to stay in power. They don't want to train every one of their minions to believe in the same system and everything else. But basically look at the, uh, I believe this is an incandescent light bulb. There's a vacuum inside the incandescent light bulb, which allows the light to work. In a non-vacuum, folks, and this is the science, by the way, so you might want to write this down. In a non-vacuum, folks, light and everything doesn't work the same way. Even if it's 93 million miles out, the non-vacuum versus the vacuum of space is totally different, folks. Therefore, if there is light, you're in a non-vacuum. Are you in a vacuum in the Earth? Well, depends on how you look at it. Not really by the way we're being taught, but... Anyways, the image of the incandescent light bulb is inside the vacuum while the exterior is in a non-vacuum form. While the Earth is in a non-vacuum form, supposedly, and the outer edges of space a vacuum. So that's something to be talked about widely. I want to talk about this because this is kind of what everybody believes it is, is that Nobody really believes that there's a necessarily a firmament around the Earth. They believe it's actually a little bit higher than where the Earth is. Um, I don't know if you'd say 100 mile, miles or 100,000 miles or whatever. But basically, all the major religions and everything basically talk about this. There's the Earth. There's the atmosphere. There's the water below the firmament, oceans and seas. The firmament containing the starry universe and waters above the firmament, the deep. This is basically the way the Bible talks about it. Um, did you know that they actually had this proverb back in ancient Egypt? Um, and the way that the ancient Egyptian religions really worked is they tried to work in the science as their god. And although I disagree with the way we're pronouncing things nowadays, it basically said that their god at the time, N-U-T or Newt or whatever, however they pronounce it, depicted was the canopy. And you'll see similar depictions on the right of an Egyptian iconology. And basically this is what they believed. In ancient Egypt, they believed the earth was immovable. They believed there was an underworld inside the earth. It was foundation of earth 25 times big. Uh, we see the 
uh, references here in the Bible. Daniel, Matthew, Genesis, Genesis, Samuel, Job, Psalm, Psalm, Moves. You guys get it, Josh? Uh, Ezekiel, Matthew, Revelations, Genesis, Jobs, Genesis, Psalms, Psalms, Psalms. I forget what D-U-T is and N-E-H. I'm not really familiar with at the moment. It's not jogging my memory off the back. I apologize, folks. But you guys see this as it is. I mean, this goes back to ancient Egypt as to what they actually believed and how our Bible is basically based on stuff that happened way earlier. Now, this is actually something I wanted to show you because this is kind of what everybody kind of technically believes. You have waters on the surface of the Earth, the Earth's atmosphere, which is supposed to just think of the word heaven as a you know altitude or something like that, and basically a vacuum of outer space, which is second heaven. And you have waters above the firmament, God's throne, supposedly third heaven. And God made the firmament and decided and, and divided the waters from which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day, or were the second day, Genesis 1 7 8. So, what I really want to do here is bring you back to this and I'm going to show you more. I don't worry, I even have a documentary on the uh, the underwater firmament as well. So I, I didn't do one to skip the other. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm just here to present the information as I can find it. Now I want to go through a few things for you. One, I found something from the ISS which surprisingly is done in infrared and it shows the uh, aurora borealis and I want to show you where I believe it not only shows the firmament but it also shows where the south pole goes around the earth look at this aurora from the ISS orbit look around here folks see this this goes all the way around folks I know it dips out a picture but this is either the firmament and or the South Pole that goes all the way around the Earth. Okay? Now, this is the first picture that I've ever seen where various things are there. Now, I know you, you're you seeing this thinking it, this picture here is of the moon because these are of the moon, but this image was actually from the Earth. How do I know? Because from what we know, there's no aurora on the moon. So this was Jan 3, 2012. So we know there's no aurora on the moon, therefore this is of Earth. And here's some stuff, and here's a landmass, and here's a landmass, and here's a bunch of stuff happening near the northern part. And look at the actual South Pole going all the way around. Now, this is done with a fisheye lens, unfortunately, if you, you can tell that. But you can see with your own eyes that they not only distorted the image, but that the South Pole goes all the way around. And it's very interesting, folks. So I'm doing this real quick to show you what this is about. And I love where this is going. So I want to talk to you a minute about why I believe there is actually a firmament and something that actually goes back to ancient history about an actual firmament. Now, I gave you the ancient Egyptian story and this and that. Now, Lemuria is supposed to be an actual place that existed. People teach this in PhD history classes. This is not a joke. This is not weird conspiracy or conjecture. 
Lemuria was supposed to be real. Atlantis was supposed to be real. Uh, nobody knows the exact reference points to, you know, were they the god societies that they were supposed to be? Well, we don't know. So basically, this is the idea. The firmament and Lemuria. The term firmament has been mentioned in different times in history, and a mysterious cloud surrounds the true nature of the concept below fascinating information. The firmament was why it's important and how it plays in Lemurian society or civilization. Now, this is very interesting, folks, because they actually give a quality description of numbers. I, I disagree with them because they don't really use a whole lot of, you know, numbers and everything. But let's talk about it. the firmament of a layer of frozen water ice above the Earth's surface. It was a huge crystalline shield in two sections. One situated 15,000 feet the other, through 18,000 feet, the other 35,000 feet to 38,000 feet above the Earth surface. It was a clear lens. At certain times of day, when light was reflected, it served as a mirror of the world below. Crystal temples all around the Earth held up the firmament. I disagree with that, but let's just keep going. The firmament was originally constructed by the initial etheric civilization that came approximately 35 million years ago. It was done to protect the Earth from radiation and sun, dangerous cosmic radiations that regularly come through his solar system. The firmament was maintained, broken, and reestablished many times as different civilizations and invasions came. So we know that it was there, it went away, and it was there again. So we know that it can be there now if we choose to believe such a thing. Thus, various floods have occurred throughout the geological history of the planet ever since the time of the initial etheric civilization. Let me go back one second. Because the the um, firmament is supposed to be of water and of ice, when that falls, it causes massive flooding, folks. Now, this goes into some weird stuff, but I want to go into it and talk about this, because I think this is actually kind of important, and yes, this will be in the sources. When the firmament existed, it was under the direction of spiritual hierarchy. I don't like that term, but let's just go with it. And those who constructed the crystalline temples, according to this hierarchy, wishes, uh, could perform several functions for the atmosphere of the planet. First, it lowered the radiation and the heat levels so that the climate of Earth and the North Pole and South Pole was within five degrees of one another. Uh, thus, the tropics were around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and the polar regions were around 70s lower. Uh, large ice sheets did not exist across the North and South Pole regions, as you see today. Second major difference is that the atmosphere uh, was that the winds and clouds did not exist. There were no clouds, and every day was sunny day. I disagree with that, but let's go on. What further added to this fact that the winds were minimal and were kept below 5 to 7 miles an hour? I disagree with that, but let's move on. Also, because there were no clouds, there were no rainstorms, so rain is something that is unique to the present area or era. Meh. This and that, folks. Again, these numbers could be bad, and they, this thing could have been like 100, 180,000 feet, and all our major storms and everything could have happened. I'm just showing you this. It's up to you to take this for granted or not. And then after this, I will show you the physics part of this, which basically says that, yes, a firmament should exist by all natural means. Okay, so basically, the body of any creature existing on the planet was invigorated by the by the energy. The heat and other radiation that would cause the body to deteriorate were kept out of the surface atmosphere by the firmament. Aha, see, that's why supposedly Noah and them lived longer, less stress on the body. The temperatures were kept in line, etc., etc., etc. Another side effect of the firmament was that the stars were magnified so that the sky would be seen as through a huge telescope. Thus, the firmament pre prevented a ravaged atmosphere in which 
there are great differences in climate, storms, extreme weather. Also, a large amount of radiation was prevented from entering Earth's atmosphere after ferments collapsed. Radiation eventually sh uh, shrunk the physical size of humans and gradually limited the length of their lifespan. That makes sense, folks. We've seen the giant skeletons of the humans. We've seen it. We know. In fact, some biblical stories, including long-lived beings, this is a result of the protection of the firmament. Your present atmosphere does not protect life as the firmament once did, and will do so again. Hint, hint, nod, nod. Now, this is actually very, very interesting here, because I do believe that Atlantis and Lemuria did exist. I do believe that it was like Crete and Athens today. Um, and like Lesbos and Crete, if you will. Okay, that's that's kind of where we are with this. That's not the region. I don't believe that's where the region where these places existed. But let's just go on with that's kind of the, the thereabouts what I believe this actually was. The civilization of Lemuria and Atlantis matured. The conflict developed between the two. As a last result. To the struggle for control, they decided to attack the crystal temples which held the firmament in place. Initially, the strategy was to destroy the firmament above the enemy. However, they underestimated the effects of destabilizing the firmament. Attacks were made simultaneously on the crystal temples so or, and so disrupted the structure of the firmament in the heavens. This caused the great end of the firmament and falling millions of gallons of water in the sky Historically and biblically, we know this time period to be of the Great Flood, which makes a hell of a lot of sense. Um, what was left behind was not only a period of roughly 40 days of rain, but a whole new world. The old histories of humanity had been virtually flooded away, and all that was was left but oral stories and legends. Now, this is something that I want to really get into. Because this is the part here that makes some sense. Okay, making sense of metallic glass. Okay, I understand what it's telling me, what the title is, but I want you to really get into this, folks. Because this is actually kind of important. If you freeze any liquid fast enough, even liquid metal, it becomes a glass. Vitrified metals or metallic glasses are at the frontier of material science research. They have been made rapidly, cooling alloys and various uh, metals, including zirconium, palladium, iron, titanium, copper, magnesium, and various variety of applications from making golf clubs to aerospace construction, but much about them remain poorly understood. Now, we can really go into this if we want, or I can take a break for a minute and explain my thesis on this. This is what I believe, folks. Okay. It's supposed to be extremely cold in space. We have a lot of water vapor in space. We have a lot of materials in space that are formed naturally. I believe that there is, at least from time to time, an actual firmament, an actual hardened shield that either does form or can form depending on how cold or warm the Earth actually is along with any man-made firmaments we may have had in the past or future. And up till now, what I've actually gotten to show you is that there were supposedly man-made firmaments which were done by civilizations in the past. I know it goes pre-biblical, and that's hard for some of you to understand, but you got to understand that pre-biblical times does not mean we went past history. It just means that we went to a time period that history, that our current history is a part of. And it doesn't mean they're hiding anything. It just means that, you know, that's not where they want to go with their history because it doesn't really affect them. So really what I want to talk to you about here relating to this, um, this concept here is that basically if you look at the diagram, and I'll show you in a minute, the more pressure you put on something, basically, the more you get something to freeze or melt. And basically, it says, if you freeze any liquid fast enough, even liquid metal, it becomes a glass. Petrified metals or 
metallic glasses are the frontier material science research. So basically what that goes back and basically says, folks, is that beyond reasonable doubt, if you have heat coming from the earth or a sun, okay, think about that, folks. If you have heat coming from a sun and they're constantly beating the heck out of the metals and the water vapor and everything else, and you have that coolness that, that what is it supposed to be, like 165 negative Celsius of space, and you constantly have those two things combining, eventually you're going to get some kind of a water vapor that will freeze, some kind of a metal vapor that will freeze. So I do believe beyond a reasonable doubt, folks, using the easiest of science we can put forward that there is in fact a firmament at some point or another on our earth in the sky. Now, there's a lot of talk as to whether or not it's, you know, right on the surface of the earth, you know, oh, let's shoot a rocket up and find out what happens, ding, 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 or the thing explodes as I've shown you in countless other videos. Or whether or not there are pockets, which I believe there actually are holes in the firmament, and that's basically how we do access our space, and that basically we do have a larger firmament, which Bible actually would say, and I believe the uh, Torah actually says as well. So there might be several firmaments we have, and basically the one that is the major one, I believe would be the second heaven, I, I believe, uh, basically would be the one that separates what we know as space space, or outer space, from where our planet is, and that's where the satellites are supposed to be. Now I don't want to say yes or no on that, because it's not my job. My job is just to perform the task here of providing you with the information I can find. Now, this has a little bit to do with the, the actual firmament, but I want to show you something. Magnetic fields bend light, not gravity. And the way this actually works out is that if there's an actual firmament, folks, it's actually held up by magnetic fields bending light. Because, as you know, the ice that basically forms when it's warmer out is generally harder and stiffer than after a um, you know after a good snowstorm. You know, have you ever thrown a snowball and somebody said, "Hey, don't throw that." You know, the snow is hard today, and you you're you're going to basically be throwing ice. Well, this is kind of the effect, and this is coming from you know uh, flat Earth T-shirt Co. But it is actually a good good video. Magnetic fields bend light, not gravity. And the more you increase or decrease the magnetics, the more and more you can bend light. So basically what we see as light can just be a projection from something completely different. So I want to show you that just to kind of give you insight into possibly another realm of this. Now this is actually kind of cool. I'd love to show you this more. So let me get into this. Alright, so here we go. This is actually pretty cool. It is almost like these electrons are running into a glass wall. Hang on. In it is almost like these electrons are running into a glass wall in space, said Professor Daniel Baker, director of CU Boulder's Laboratory for Atmospheric and Space Physics. Scientists discover Earth's Star Trek-style invisible shield. A team of scientists led by the University of Colorado Boulder has discovered an invisible Star Trek-style shield that blocks so-called killer electrons 7,200 miles above Earth. The electrons, which travel... Did you hear that? Let me go back and you can hear the numbers again as to where this shield supposedly is. Star Trek style shield that blocks so-called killer electrons 7,200 miles above Earth. So, 
How many? Let's do this one more time. Style shield that blocks so-called killer electrons 7,200 miles above Earth. So, 7,200 miles above Earth. Okay, so that's basically where it starts the killer electrons and stuff. So, there is one that stops killer electrons. You have heard this. These people will be sourced. So, now we move on. Here I want to show you how everything looked according to pretty much the way the Bible says it does. Not my bad. Anyway, so you have civil high level and earth level. Oddly enough, three sections just like the Bible says. You know, a first heaven, a second heaven, and a third heaven. I know the second heaven is supposed to be the spatial area composed of the uh, the suns and the stars and the planets, and the third, the um, heaven area there. And I want to really show you this because at 130,000 feet, the sun is so close to the earth, it basically looks flat, and how this has to do with the firmament is basically proving that between 108,000 and 131,000, there is a flat so-called horizon uh, that if you look into, basically, I will start it over so you can actually see what I saw. And basically, this just goes back into the flat earth theory that... Curvature a lot less than this. And I don't want to put this into anything. You know, various things of this sort. And a balloon diameter of 70 feet can basically be over the Earth. And there we go. That's what I want to show you. That's what it really looks like from space, folks. There's almost no separation between the sun, which is supposedly, quote-unquote, 93 mi million miles away, and everything else. And basically, that everything kind of just blends. So firmament, no firmament there. That's okay. Uh, we've already done this, really, to talk about, you know, the moon's axis and the sun's axis on the stuff, but you can go into this a little bit into your own. It talks about uh, centripetal vortex with a max spin at its apex point. And it basically gives you this and that, and I'll be disproving the spinning earth thing in the next video. But I'll wait about a week to put that up. So... I just wanted to show you these real quick just to kind of give you an idea that we are kind of going into the flat earth a little bit so that you're not just completely discombobulated uh, and disappointed. All right, here's one on the magnetic properties of the earth. Scientifically proven, when metal is heated, it loses its magnetic properties. Gravity depends on a theory of magnetism generated by a superheated molten metal inner core. Well, if that's true, then it's not magnetic at least not the way we understand magnetics. Even the inertial and convectional forces thereof cannot work the way we're being told. Unless, of course, the sun gives us all our, our magnetics and that the way that our magnetic fields work is through the sun bombarding the earth so many times per second. But I don't see that theory working out to any degree. So I want to bring this to you. Um, I did work in some others. Um, here is the one that rapper Bob is not big on brains. This guy, this is the uh, Nielsen guy, basically trying to say that uh, you know this rapper basically came out about the flat Earth and says the conversation has started. Earth is flat, and that's one of the ones I want to show you before. This is another updated. Uh, uh, Flat Earth map. I forget which one this is. Um, despite this saying, polar bears, penguins, toucans, and gorillas, I wanted to show you that people are actually starting to update this a little bit. And I don't really want to talk about what this is about, but 
as you can see, there are more and more images. So if this thing was completely false, there would be less and less images, folks. So let's get back to the actual uh, firmament. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you this here. This is from NASA. Flights to orbit. NASA, folks. NASA, the guys that send you to space. Now, what I want to show you here is very simple, that this is how they basically say they get to space. H equals 100 miles from launch to power descent to staging to upper stage to engine cutoff. We come over here. They have all their nice little vectors and basically how they ascend and descend. This one I find funny. They have a launch, a coasting ascent, a maximum altitude, and a coasting descent and a recovery stage. I'll go into this in a minute. It's actually pretty awesome. And here they basically show you the math involved in it. Pressure, area, length, acceleration time, velocity, gravitational acceleration, liftoff time, weight. And as you know, I've been a pilot for at least a little while. I at least went for my uh, pilot's license. I haven't finished it yet, but I at least know enough to know that um, if you're going into space, how come there's a maximum altitude? And that that maximum altitude is not aligned with what your coasting ascent is. Because your coasting ascent should be set to a certain degree point to where your vehicle does not stall or does not break up due to inertial forces. So that so that maximum altitude should be set by your coastal acceleration or your coastal ascent. And this is a coasting descent and a recovery. So these guys are kind of telling us lies. Now I love this and what I want to do is I want to take you to the actual video. And that's what I thought I did, but I accidentally hit pause on this. So I was actually talking to myself at this point, which is kind of bad. So basically, rockets never leave Earth, lower atmosphere. SS-52. This is Vandenberg Air Force, Gen 31, 2015. Delta II rocket not going to space. So I'm only going to let this go on for a little bit. But this, these are people that are supposed to be taking you to space, folks. And yet they're not taking you to space, folks. Kind of interesting, huh? Yeah, that's what I thought. Very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Now what I want to show you over here is a cool little proverb. Not not really a proverb, but it's a cool concept. It kind of gets into the uh, into the firmament, and it basically says that heavens are created by glass. Uh, planets are smaller and closer than we think, and they are monitoring us. They, I don't know what the reference was to, but as we know, folks, the sun is a lot closer than the 93 million miles away. So if the planets are only, say, a few th planets away from us, so say 100,000 miles rather than, you know, the light years predicted or fake to us, then we have to understand that the universe is much smaller, the galaxy is much smaller, everything we know to be much smaller. And that basically everything we see is basically glass and mirrors and it's actually kind of a cool concept. And I wanted to show you this one here because it kind of shows that, you know, everything we know of is kind of fake. And it shows our sun that's supposed to be 93 million miles away, which isn't, you know, hovering above a certain point, which the firmament could be above. Going back to the firmament, our lecture today. So I wanted to show you this. Just kind of to get to a point that, hey, everything we know is kind of fake to one degree or another. Kind of weird, kind of fake. 
So as we reach at least most of the conclusion here, we know that throughout history involving ancient Egypt, involving Lemuria, involving Atlantis, no doubt other cultures that we can reference to when we find the appropriate um, references, they do account for a firmament. Um, we know ancient Judea, which wrote the Torah, accounted for a firmament because it was in the Torah, it became the Bible. Those are based off of things that were known about in other cultures around the world hundreds of years before their time. So, you've seen the sciences as to whether or not there should be an actual firmament around the Earth, or at least near the Earth, near the outer atmosphere, um, as to how the sun, the particles of water, and various other elements should freeze the water vapor in and around the Earth in the air, forming what should be a firmament, along with the metals and various things of that sort. I mean, quite honestly, folks, the, and that, that was from the physics lecture, by the way, um, quite honestly, the way you actually look at this, there should be a firmament. I believe it to be just outside of where the gravitational field is. I don't know so much if I believe that there are satellites, but I know, but I... I because I'm such an aviation enthusiast, I have to say, yes, there are. And I believe that, say, at, I don't know, 200,000 miles is where the firmament actually exists. And that basically is where the heat basically goes and where the water kind of sits and where all the major elements and everything sit. And so when they're bombarded by the heat of the sun, the water vapor from the planet and everything else, when we get that constant freezing, there is an actual firmament. Now, I had a, had a very good source um, as to supposedly having a piece of the firmament, but unfortunately, when I got to the actual source, I forget what it was actually about, but it wasn't exactly quite what I was looking for, and I discredited it so that you didn't have to. But, there are people who claim that when their pilots and their astronauts do go into space and everything, that these satellites have, at least to some degree, gotten parts of the firmament which have supposedly broken off and are floating, and or, you know, who knows, found the holes in the firmament where everything is. Remember what they remember what I said. Firmaments existed in multiple, uh, multiple time periods. Um, whether or not you believe it's closer to Earth, further away from Earth, separates us from the actual universe as it is, or the nothingness, the area that God is, and everything else, it's definitely going to be true at some point or another. It's whether or not you believe in one version of it or another, and from that, you can kind of go from there as to whether or not the firmament exists, because I do believe the firmament exists. I believe the physics proves that if you freeze something enough, you get a glass, and basically, when that heat comes from the Earth hitting this and the Sun hitting the Earth all the time, the uh, the molecules in the uh, upper atmosphere and everything have to harden. That is scientific proof, and I think that is why we have people that can actually go into space at least partly but not all the way, and that way it kind of throws away, well, are there satellites, are there not satellites, are there this, are there that? Well, I don't know. Because as you saw, there are rockets and things that supposedly do not go into space. There are, um, as you saw the NASA um, thing, that there is a point at which the rockets and the space capsules and the various things that we shoot into space don't actually go into space. Um, the Mars rover is supposedly sitting on an island in Canada, uh, where it's supposedly on Mars, quote unquote. Um, and they've disproved, or they've they've proved, they've at least theoretically proved that because various land masses that people know about on Earth exist on quote unquote Mars, and those were found in on an island in Canada. So, this is 
Flat Earth and its Firmament documentary. I believe I've given you strong evidence to support the fact that there was and or is a firmament. But as always, you guys decide. I've given you the physics, given you the chemistry, I've given you the magnetics, I've given you scientific inferences into it, I've given you historical references, I've given you religious references. As always, you decide.